Hey there, my fellow film buffs. What's going on? It's me again, Straight Shooter. So, again, I'm at Team Sound Studios. Thanks again to you guys. And once again, my review will have spoilers. So you are forewarned. Anyway, so I went to see Alita Battle Angel. And I'll be honest, disclaimer first, I don't know anything about the manga, original source material. I just thought it looked like it would be a really good movie. It would be entertaining. And I went with the 3D because I kept hearing about how this movie was meant to be in 3D. And it makes sense because Jim Cameron was involved. Uh, Robert Rodriguez, who has also proved himself to be good with 3D. So right away, the movie starts out with Christoph Waltz, who we all know from Inglorious Bastards and a bunch of other movies. He finds in the scrapyard remains of this robot that he fixes up, and it turns out to be Alita. He wakes her up, and she doesn't really know who she is. All she knows is that Waltz's character, Dr. Ido, he built the body that she's in for his daughter who passed away because she was disabled. She was in a wheelchair. He wanted to help her walk again, but she was murdered. So he gave the body to her because she was special. And I'll talk about why she was special in a few minutes or so. The first act is more a lot of telling about her, like from her point of view, what's going on in the world. It takes place in the future. She's a cyborg who has a human heart and a human brain. Because of that, she can feel, she, she remembers parts of her, of her life before she was a cyborg, but she's still trying to figure a lot of that out as she goes. But as it turned out, she can really fight. There was this scene where a bunch of other androids try to jump her and she takes them all out. And we find out as, as the movie goes on that she was part of an, of an elite fighting squad. Uh, they were called hunter killers or berserkers and their design is obsolete but they don't make them like that anymore. Um, they probably discontinued them because it would be a threat to the people in the sky, Nova, uh, the main villain in the movie, who we don't really see. He talks through other characters in the movie, but he controls the city in the sky, and everyone living on the ground is trying to get up to that world on top that was built a long time ago. She learns to fight among other bounty hunters, and she learns how to do sports. She learns this sport called motorball, which is you chase the ball, you try to take the ball away from other people, and you, you know, you check them. And but in the real game, it's more dangerous because people get taken out. But it turned out that she had an affinity for it. And there's also um, a side like little love story between her and this human. And in the future, I guess that makes sense because cyborgs are more lifelike and it's hard to sometimes distinguish them from people and let me say also that the motion capture how they brought Alita to form on the big screen it was amazing but she looked amazing the stunts the the fight choreography was really good the action scenes were all intense, whether she was fighting or whether she was playing the sport. I'm not usually a big advocate of 3D movies because most of them aren't really worth it, to be honest with you. But I think this movie is because it adds dimensions that most 3D movies don't. And like I said, it makes sense because Cameron was involved and... He, it, it seems like he kind of adapted some of the same technology he did for Avatar, which is a great example of a movie that you need to see in 3D. I wouldn't say that this movie is bad without the 3D, but it definitely helps add, the, add in that little bit of extra that makes it really awesome. So after the first act, you go into her fighting, finding out more about her life, 
trying to get up above. And it turns out, well, there's two ways she can do it. She can become a bounty hunter, which she doesn't really want to do, but she wants to help her boyfriend, the guy that she's with. When that doesn't work out, she ends up joining the motorball league. And she has to become a champion to go up above. There's another tragic scene. There's this rogue bounty hunter puts a bounty on the boyfriend because the bounty hunter kills another bounty hunter, but reports it that the boyfriend did it. So he hunts him. He ends up stabbing the boyfriend, but they put him in a robot body. And he goes up, he tries to go all the way up the, uh, up the pipeline to get to the city above. Aaliyah chases him, and there's this really high-tech defense technology where it's a spinning blade and it goes down the pipeline. He ends up getting shredded, but she escapes, and he's left with just a torso and an arm, and she can't hold on to him, and he falls to his death. So after that, she realizes that she has to fight Nova, the main bad person. She kills the people that are working for him down below and joins the Motorball League and is eligible to fight in the championship game. And that's where the movie closes. She's introduced as one of the champions to fight and that's her chance to go up above. And, and then, you know, roll credits. And I wasn't really disappointed that the fact that they didn't show that motorball scene because the movie already was pretty action-packed. It didn't need another action scene at that point. I mean, I guess it could have been like two and a half hours if it wanted to be, but, it, but I didn't feel like it needed to be. I felt like the movie was long enough and it ended up on a good note and it set up the possibility for a sequel, which I hope does happen. Because, like I said, I know nothing about the story, the original story, the manga, or whatever have you. I just thought, I thought this was a really good movie. I thought the effects were really good. I thought they used the 3D well. I thought the characters were really good. I mean, they had a strong cast. Christoph Waltz, which I mentioned. Marshala Ali, which plays one of the henchmen that is working through Nova. Jennifer Connelly is... Chris, Christoph Waltz's character is uh, Ido's ex-wife, and she ends up feeling for Alita in the end. She lets her go. And I like the growth in her character, because at first you just think, well, she left Dr. Ido because she couldn't deal with her daughter's death, and she's just out to destroy all androids or whatever, but at the end she realizes that she can't do this. She can't do what Nova wants them to do. And she lets Alita go because she realizes Alita is the chance for salvation for, for everyone. I just thought the movie was really entertaining. There were great action scenes. Set designs were really spectacular. And like I said, whether they're doing fighting stunts or whether they're doing the motorball scenes, it's just really engaging and you really care about Alita's character because even though she's a cyborg, they made her really human. Like, there's this line in the movie where Alita and the boyfriend are getting together and and she says to him, you don't mind that I'm not, not all the way human? And he's like, you're more human than anyone I met. And you as the audience feel the same way because... She really is tr a true character, pure and intent on saving herself and saving the people that she cares about, ascending up to the city above. And she's really a typical hero. And the movie wouldn't have worked if her character wasn't so great, but they did it really well. I give the movie a solid A, I'll definitely be picking it up when it comes out on disc, even though I don't have a 3D TV. But like I said, I didn't think the movie was bad without the 3D. It's just that the 3D was worth seeing in this case. But that's how I see it. For now, I'm signing off. See you guys later.